Welcome to the GCN Tech Show. This week, we've got a jam-packed show. We've got the winners of our Castelli Custom GCN Kit giveaway. That's pretty cool. We've also got new Wahoo ticker heart rate monitors. There's a new specialized bike, new DT Swiss hubs, the Bike Vault, your upgrades, and our main talking point, how much have pro bikes evolved in the last 10 years? Let's do it. Technology is great, and we become so used to brilliant inventions that they seamlessly integrate themselves into our lives that they feel like they've always been there, and we forget that, well, often, in many cases, they weren't. YouTube is a great example. It's only been around since 2005, and for the first five of its years, it was just videos of, well, cats and babies shot on really poor quality camera phones. Now look where we are. <laughs> Incredible. 10 years ago, the bikes the pros were riding were, well, typically carbon fiber and usually weighed 6.8 kilograms like the pro bikes today. But they had the shape and silhouette of old school steel bikes from the previous era in many cases. Typically, these bikes were fitted with 10 speed group sets in the case of Shimano or SRAM, although Campagnolo had come first to the party with 11 speed in 2008. And electronic group sets, well, they were just starting to emerge as a serious proposition. <laughs> some sort of joke to you, Ollie? Um, sorry, Mavic, I forgot about uh, Mavic's app. Anyway, Campagnolo had its EPS electronic shifting and Jura Ace had its DI2 7970 group set that was 10 speed um, DI2 that came out in 2009. Both had big clunky external batteries and weighed more than their mechanical counterparts. And, you know, weight conscious consumers uh, and pros weren't initially convinced. Uh, most chain sets at this time were five bolt as well, and there weren't many power meter options available. Most of the pros were running SRMs, and quite a lot of them still do today, um, and power tap hubs were also a very popular option. In fact, Ollie, prior to 2009, no bike rides actually happened because Strava hadn't been invented. Good point. I mean, what, GPS? wasn't even widely used in 2010. Most pros didn't even have it. But uh, I do know of one pro who, who did have it and uh, kept all of his ride files, he, I mean, he's really geeky, and then retrospectively uploaded them years later and got loads of KOMs through sitting and drafting in a peloton of other pros who didn't have GPS. External cables were still common on bikes 10 years ago, and there wasn't really much integration in general. No one had disc brakes, and direct mount brakes weren't really a thing. Handlebars were wider, tires were narrower, and clothing was much looser. Some things remain the same though. Uh, many saddles, such as the Physique Arioni on my bike, is relatively unchanged in its design in the last 10 years. Pedals, uh, like Lukio blades, you know, save for a few tweaks, are very similar. And bottles and cages are pretty much the same as well. Jura Ace 9000 came out in 2012, and with it, we got 11 speed shifting, four bolt crank arms, and, well, for the first time, electronic shifting that was lighter than mechanical. Campagnolo also switched to four bolt crank arms in the last 10 years. And SRAM joined the 11 speed party in 2013 with Red 22. We then got the real game change in 2016, which was ETAP, electronic wireless shifting from SRAM. And while other companies have come along and tried to develop and introduce new group sets, it's fair to say that none of them have broken the dominance of the big three. So in summary, we've seen bikes become much more aerodynamic, even climbing ones. Uh, we now have 12 speed gears, 13 in the case of rotor. We have wireless electronic gears. We have loads of integration, hidden cables. It can often be a case of spot the cable on bikes. We also have about a million more bottom bracket standards. On, on bikes, and in several cases, we have bikes that feature all of this tech, yet they still weigh 6.8 kilograms, the same as bikes 10 years ago. So bikes may not have got lighter, but they now contain way more functionality at the same weight. So that was the last 10 years, but what do you reckon about the next 10 years? 
What do you think, Manon? Well, Ollie, I am actually pretty happy with how my bike is at the moment, so I wouldn't change that much. And I have been pretty late to this whole technology thing, as this year is the first year I've had electronic gear in, so a little bit late to the party, but... I finally made it. But one thing I would like to see is a drive train that cleans itself or doesn't get dirty. Doesn't get dirty, that would be a good one because there's nothing worse than, especially when you're riding in the winter, you have to clean and degrease and regrease your chain. Every time you go out on the bike, especially when you live in the UK and it's, it's raining quite a lot of time and riding on muddy roads. So that would be pretty cool. And just a self-cleaning bike or a bike that didn't get dirty in general. I would I would really like that. So maybe in 10 years, we'll have that. Mine is more of a, a dream than a request. In 10 years time, I'd like there to be one bottom bracket standard to rule them all. And it doesn't creak, it's perfect. The bike industry will just look upon it and go, bottom brackets, completed it, mate. Well, anyway, I mean, you know, a boy, a boy can dream. But uh, let us know in the comments section what you think and what you predict is going to be the big technological advances in road bikes over the next 10 years. And then who knows, maybe in 10 years time, we'll read out some of your comments and applaud the people that correctly predicted the future, like Nostradamus, and laugh at the people who, who got it terribly wrong. Don't let that put you off though, please, please comment down below. Time now for Hot Tech. First up this week, Wahoo has just launched a new slimmer and lighter version of its Ticker and Ticker X heart rate straps. They're said to be now just 48 grams for the pod and the strap. And as a comparison, in case you're wondering, this is the older one, my personal uh, Wahoo ticket. Sorry about the sweat stains. Um, and these are the new ones. So, there you go. The new straps are said to be able to pair up to three different Bluetooth devices simultaneously, as well as Ant Plus connections, and battery life is said to have been increased by almost 50%, so they say that you can get up to 500 hours out of a single battery in these bad boys now. Nice. The new pods are said to be able to pair up to three different Bluetooth devices, as well as Ant Plus connections. The LEDs have been moved as well to a more ergonomic position on the top edge so that the intention is that the wearer can see that they're blinking and on and transmitting data. And battery life is said to be improved by almost 50%. They uh, claim that you can now get up to 500 hours out of a single battery. Nice. And in case you're wondering what is the difference between the ticket and the Ticker X. Well, it's simple. It's just that the Ticker X is able to transmit and calculate cadence as you ride without the need for a cadence sensor. Pretty cool. Next, we have a new bike. Specialized has just launched today. A new version of its Diverge gravel bike, complete with pictures of Peter Sagan riding it and shredding gravel. For me, it's a very nice bike. The new Diverge has the Future Shock suspension system in the headset that's come from the specialized Roubaix. It also has a really interesting and very thin chain stay on the drive side. And this is in part to help improve tire clearance uh, on the new bike, which is whopping. It's up to 47 millimeters, according to Spech. And there's also a generous storage compartment in the down tube called a, a SWAT compartment. And this kind of integrated storage is a really neat idea and it's something that's actually coming over from mountain bike tech. It's actually something I think we'll start to see a lot more of in, in future bikes. Cool. Some new hub tech now. DT Swiss has just launched a new version of its 240 hub. Now the 240 hub is a kind of an industry stalwart famed for its reliability and simplicity. And its mechanism works by way of these sort of two ratchet rings that are pushed together by conical springs and then locked together. And this mechanism is simple, reliable, and well, it can, it can actually handle pretty high force loads on it as well. These two ratchet rings are actually from my spares box. Um, and this gets quite nerdy, but I, I, I like the engineering here. So what they've now done on the new mechanism, they still have two ratchet rings, but one of them is now fixed inside the hub shell, and the other one is then allowed to move freely along the axle by way of a spring and then lock and engage. And in doing this, DT Swiss um, has reduced the number of components 
in the hub. They've simplified it, which they believe should make it more reliable. There's fewer components. Should also make it lighter. Um, and they also reckon it reduces wear and has slightly reduced the time it takes to engage as well on the pickup on the hub. This design allows the bearings to be spaced further apart on the hub axle as well, which should reduce load on those bearings and in theory make them last longer. And it can also apparently, according to DT Swiss, make the axle of the hub body a bit more stiff as well. And this is cool, some neat engineering solutions here, uh, which I like. And it's also ha has big implications for a lot of us because DT Swiss are massive when it comes to making hubs for other brands. Um, and so a lot of brands use their, their hubs or they use the internals from their hubs. But yeah, some cool, geeky, nerdy tech. I like it. We end hot tech news this week with the exciting development that you can now get ceramic speed oversized pulley wheel systems for free. Yes, one of the most bling pieces of bike jewellery available to humanity is now free. Free? Yeah, in Zwift. Oh. Oh. Still, I mean, it's pretty cool though, right? Uh, to get it, you will have to complete the ceramic speed mission in Zwift, which um, involves riding in the month of May, and you have to ride three different types of bikes. So 25 miles on a mountain bike, 50 miles on a time trial bike, and 75 miles on a road bike. Um, how many watts does it save in game? Um, well, they haven't said, but still, looks good though, doesn't it? More hot tech next week. We're now going to announce the winners of our GCN custom Castelli kit giveaway. One of the greatest prizes ever. Each winner is gonna get a pair of shorts, a jersey, and a custom GCN Gabba. Amazing, like that one. And I know right now, Cy Richardson is at home crossing his fingers, crossing everything in the hope that he is one of the names I'm about to read out because he still hasn't got his kit yet. Anyway, the winners are as follows. Pavel Mili from Slovakia, uh, Fiona Miller from Great Britain, and Marvin Plogsteis from uh, Germany. I hope I've read that out correctly, Marvin, but uh, well done. You've got yourself a Gabba shorts and jersey. Hope you enjoy the kit, guys, well done. And if you didn't win, fear not, Sai, you can get the kit pre-ordered in the GCN shop, shop.globalcyclingnetwork. Chin up. Now it's time to screw around upgrades and buy upgrades, where you send in pictures and upgrades that you've made to your bikes and cycling lives for the chance to win the ultimate prize, a GCN cap. Before we go on to this week, let's go through last week's results. If you remember, we had Paul's GCN themed bike, and this was a pretty good upgrade because it was obviously GCN themed. And we had Brett Harding's son's repainted bike, and it was a nail biting finish. It was super, super, super close. With 53%, it was Brett Harding's son repainted bike. Well done, Brett. Send us your details on Facebook and we'll get the GCN cap in the post to you. My pick for the buy upgrades this week is this one in from David Theck. He picked up this 80s Hellman on eBay in need of some TLC. He has completely stripped it and repainted and rebuilt with a combination of existing, new and garage shelf parts. The final build is a Reynolds 653 frame, hand built in Melbourne, pretty cool, with mid 2000 Shimano 105 derailleur and wheels, eight speed cassette and down tube shifters. Build comes in at just over nine kilos. Love, th love the look and the fact it can hold its own on the road with the modern bikes. So that bike before definitely is in need some of, of some TLC. Um, yes, definitely could do with a spruce up but some really good pictures in here. At, um, stripped the bike, took all the paint off and repainted. Did really good work. Good job with the paint work. I'm a big fan of that. And then the finished product. If that was in the bike vault, I would super nice that, just, just to let you know. Um, that looks brand spanking new. So a really good upgrade there, but who is David up against? Ollie, what's your pick? Thanks, Manon. Although I have to say, it's not gonna be 
plain sailing for David Feck because there's some stiff competition that I've picked out. So check this out. It's from Luis Alvarez, who submitted it in the app, and he says that he bought this bike for $20 on Craigslist. I mean, wow, that's amazing. Um, and he said, but it was in a non-riding condition. The tires were completely disintegrated, as well as the brake hoods. Chain was completely corroded, and the, some of the spokes were broken. So he stripped the frame down, he sandblasted it, and powder coated it in this beautiful red. And then he's got all the aluminium components and uh, polished them. I'll tell you what, you've been doing a lot of polishing there in, in lockdown, because um, they are very shiny. <laughs> and you've installed some new uh, Michelin gum wall tires. Uh, they look very smart, very like oh, They just, they, they don't work on every bike. They work on this one, very smart. Uh, you've got new bar tape, new hoods, pedals, and a gold chain, fist pump myself. And you said you've serviced every bearing on the bike, from the bottom bracket to the headset. Gotta admire the commitment. Um, wow, and you've, you've, you've kept this as original as possible. I mean, it's, it's, the components on there are great, but you've, you've put the modern clipless Kios on there, but they are a classic design. And you, apparently, um, Lewis says he's done this for less than $150. Uh, and a lot of elbow grease. Well, I love it. I think that's great. And I love the powder coating you've done. It's simple, red bikes. They always look good. Um, that's that's beautiful. That's really, I mean, you could sell that, I reckon, and make quite a bit of money, but you're probably not gonna do that. Well, who's it gonna be, David or Lewis? You can vote in the app, you can decide. But remember, it's not you're not voting for me or Manon, you're voting for the upgrade. Vote for, vote for Lewis. Definitely, definitely vote for Lewis. Yeah. It's now time for the bike vault where you submit pictures of your bikes and I vote if they're nice or super nice. And if it's super nice, the bike vault bell gets rung. Of course, if you do disagree with my judgments because some of you might, everybody has a different super nice opinion. You can head over to the GCN app and have your say on all these bikes in the bike vault section. So make sure you go over and vote. First up this week, we have this one in from Valcrionetto, I think. It is a Bianchi Ultra XR4, Shimano Di2, and a nice pair of Zip 303 wheels there, Quark Crank. That background is extremely nice. It doesn't, doesn't even look real. I'm a big fan of that background, wherever that is. It doesn't say, but I do like that. However, if we move on to the bike, we're not in Biggie Smalls. The cranks aren't lined up. The valves aren't at six o'clock. We've got a bit of a chimney, but I think we, we can we can do that chimney. That's only a little bit of a chimney. Um, it is a nice bike. Big fan of the bike, but it's not quite bike vault worthy. So for that reason, this is just going to be a nice for me. Next up in the bike vault, we have this Obey Orca. SRAM Force AXS on there, Reynolds Wheels 2009 bike. I'm gonna say I'm a very big fan of the paintwork on this. I'm a big fan of that like minty greeny color. Do like, let's take a closer look. The valves are lined up, crank at three o'clock. We're in Biggie Smalls, check. No chimney, check. Nice clean background. I'm a fan. I do really like this bike. Very neat looking. Taking the bottles off, no excess. For that reason, I'm gonna give the first super nice of the bike vault this week. Well done Evan and the Red. Next up is this from Jeff and he sent in his Eddie Merckx Corsa Extra from 1989. And it's got a SRAM AXS Force and Zip 303 wheels. That is, I love the retro and modern on this bike with the retro frame and then, you know, the modern components, the zip wheels, zip seat post, no chimney. And I'm not sure there's really much I can pick out on this bike because all the bike, bike fault rules have been applied. I love it. It's really nice that. 
and for that reason, super nice. I'm a big fan of that. Retro and modern put together. Best of both worlds. Well done, Jeff. Next up, we have this in from The Monday Three. Sent in a Scott Addict RC Premium from 2020 DI Durace DT Swiss. First ride after lockdown on a brand new bike. That is morale there. And this is very nice. And I do enjoy the tan sidewalls and the saddle the same colour. That actually goes very well on this bike that is all black. And we're following all the bike vault rules. We need a thing for tan sidewalls. I feel like that deserves a thing. I can't run a fist pump because that's skull chain. Um, maybe you guys can come up with a thing. Maybe a, a little hand thing. I don't know. Anyway, the only thing that could make this bike better is a gold chain. That This bike with a gold chain would be unbelievable. But this is a very neat bike as well. There's no cables in sight. Everything is very neat. And yeah, the bike vault rules have been applied again. No saddlebag, bottles off, valves at six o'clock, crank at three o'clock, we're in Biggie Smalls, no chimney at all. <laughs> I'm gonna give it a super nice. So generous of me this week in the bike fold, but it deserves it. Next up, we have this one in from Harry Brunt. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Step aside, man on, as that is a Mark I RAF Hawker Hurricane. In fact, it's actually a replica of Hurricane 2921 of Flight Lieutenant Pete Brothers of 32 Squadron flown out of Biggin Hill Aerodrome during the Battle of Britain. Oh yes, and let me tell you, you have not lived until you have heard the sound, the roar of a Rolls-Royce Merlin engine flying overhead, all 1,460 horsepower. Oh. And in many ways, the Hurricane was in the shadow of the uh, more famous Supermarine Spitfire, but in many ways it was a superior machine. It was simpler, cheaper and easier to manufacture and repair. It also had a more rugged landing gear and a more effective armament distribution in its wings of its 303 Browning machine guns, all eight of them. Oh yes, stunning, super nice. <laughs> Anyway, that's it for the bike fault this week. Remember, you can head over to the GCN app and have your say on all these bikes and if they're a nice or a super nice. And even some of our presenters have uploaded their bikes, so you can have your say on their bikes if they're a nice or a super nice. Mine's a super nice, of course. And if you want to your bike on the bike fault next week, get it uploaded to the GCN app. That's all we've got time for on this week's show. So sorry it's the end of the show, but if you've enjoyed it, then please give it a like, uh, share and comment and all that jazz. And if you'd like to support the channel, well, you can head over to shop.globalcyclingnetwork, get your hands on some merch, GCN mug, and pre-order the new kit if you like it and you're unlucky enough not to win. I know Cy will be placing his pre-order. And uh, yeah, I'll see you next time. I'm also gonna... Um, Update my Java. <laughs> how, long, how long has that message been there? Oh. Am I some sort of joke to you, Ollie? No, that's two. Am I some sort of joke to you, Ollie? <sighs> One more. Am I some sort of joke to you, Ollie? Oh. Oh. Oh, Ness. <laughs>